Hello everyone. I'm Professor Wilson Kamami. My YouTube channel is called Professor Wilson Kamami. And thank you guys for giving me more than 1000 subscribers. I think the channel is growing. Well, this is due to your help and your your contribution toward this. Today we are going to look at parametric differentiation. Earlier we looked at how we differentiate other function polynomial, trigonometric, all those kind of functions. Today we are, we are going to look at parametric. In this case, we may need the knowledge of the previous classes, where in this case, if you are given two functions, we look at uh, if you are given two functions of t, you may be asked now to get the de derivative of one function with the respect of the other. But those two functions are function of t. Regardless if it is trigonometry, regardless if it is exponential, uh, we, we are going to tackle all those examples if you are given exponential function, if you are given trigonometric function, but you have to use parametric differentiation. So here, I have given just an illustration. If you are given x is a function of t, and y is a function of t again, and you are required to get change in y over change in x, and derivative you are required to differentiate y with respect to x. So in this case, it will be derivative of y with respect to t times derivative of t with respect to x. So in this case, as you can see, we have a function of x, which is a function of t, and y is a function of t. So we can be able to differentiate x with respect to t. Here, you'll be able to get now the simple, and you can be able to differentiate y with respect to t. And if you ask to calculate the second derivative with respect to x, our second derivative of y with respect to x, you just differentiate the first function with respect to t. And my first function derivative was change in y over change in x. So we are differentiating it with respect to t. Then again, we multiply with dt over dx. I'm a change in t over with respect to x. Let's take example. If you are given x is t squared and y is t cubed, how do you differentiate this one? I've given an example where you are given a polynomial. x is equal to t squared, y is equal to t cubed. As you can see here, we can be able to differentiate x with respect to t. And you will be able to get 2t. This one is clear based on the first class of calculus where we looked at roots of differentiation. So you get 2 there then t to power 1. So again, you can get change in y over change in t. So you differentiate y with respect to t, and you get 3 t to power 2, because you bring 3 there, then t to power 2. So now, if you want to get now change in y over change in x, we said it to be change in y over change in t times change in t over change in x. And what is my change in y over change in t? We have gotten it is 3t squared times what is dt over dx. In this case, we have dx over dt. But this time, we are required to get dt over dx. So it is the reciprocal of this one. So it will be, because this is 2t over 1, so here you have 1 over 2t. And you get 3 over 2t. I'm a 3t over 2. And that's how we get the first derivative. In case we ask to get the second derivative, with respect to x, we said we differentiate the first derivative with respect to t. My first derivative change in y over change in x, we are differentiating this one with respect to t times dt over dx. And in that case, we are differentiating the first derivative. What was my first derivative? 3t over 2. We are differentiating this one with respect to t. Then we multiply with the dt over dx. We had the dx over dt. We say the dt over dx will be 1 over 2t. And you find that when you differentiate this one, you get 3 over 2. Now times 1 over 2t. And you get 3 over 4t. Since, since you realize that uh, our dx over dt need 2t over 1. So dt over dx, it's 1 over 2t here. Yeah. But when you differentiate now this one with respect to t, as you can see here, we are focused on differentiating our first derivative with respect to t. 
So we are differentiating our first derivative with respect to t. Since we have 3t over 2 or 3 over 2t, when you differentiate that one, you get 3 over 2, and that's the answer. So that 3 over 2 times 1 over 2t, you get 3 over 4t. That's how we do what we call a parametric differentiation. Maybe we can look at more examples. Let's look at example 2 on the same. So here we have our example 2. Our example 2, we are given x is equals to 2at squared, and my y is 4at squared. How do you differentiate that one? We say it first of all, you differentiate x, now solution, you differentiate x with respect to t. So here, I'm treating my a as constant, so I'll get 4at, and now I can be able to get change in y over change in t, I'll get 4a, because when you differentiate 4at, you get 4a. Remember, I'm treating a as constant. And we said if you are to differentiate 2t, you get 2, 3t, you get 3. So here I'm differentiating 4at, I'll get 4a. So we said change in y <coughs> over change in x will be change in y over change in t times change in t over change in x. So what is change in y over change in x? You find that change in y over change in change in t for a change in y over change in t, you get it is 4a times change in t over change in x, it is the reciprocal of this one. Remember, change in x over change in t was 4at. So change in t over change in x will be 1 over 4at. So let that one know that, let every student know that here we are getting the reciprocal. So dt over dx will be 1 over 4at, and you find that this one will be 1 over t, because 4a, 4a will cancel, and that's the first derivative. In case you ask to calculate now the second derivative, we assume you ask to get the second derivative. In this case, we said first of all, you differentiate our first derivative. What is my first derivative? 1 over t. We have gotten the first derivative is 1 over t, but this time we are differentiating with respect to t times dt over dx. So when you differentiate 1 over t, you get negative 1 over t squared times dt over dx, we got n, it is 1 over 4at. And the answer you get is minus 1 over 4at cubed. Maybe, uh, that's how we get the, that, that's our example too, but maybe I can classify, uh, clarify a, a, a bit on how we differentiate 1 over t. Remember, we are differentiating 1 over t. We say this one, you can use two methods. You can use quotient rule. Or at the same time, you can use the law of indices, where this one, we are differentiating t to the power minus 1. You can make one. Based on the law of indices, 1 over t, it is t to the power minus 1. So when you differentiate this one, you get minus 1, t to the power minus 1, minus 1. So you get minus t minus 2 which is the same as minus 1 over t squared. Which, in this case, you'll be able to see that's where we have been able to put that one. Because uh, I have converted this one in based on the row of indices to be on a numerator. Instead of having 1 over t, uh, I change it to be t to power minus 1. So based on the row of uh, how we differentiate rules of differentiation, you bring minus there, minus 1, then you minus power. So you have minus 2. And uh, t to power minus 2, it is the same as 1 over t squared. And the negative remains. So that's how we differentiate that one. And that's how we get the second derivative. So I think with that example, for those who like to differentiate this one, maybe using the quotient rule, we know based on the quotient rule here, we can use the quotient rule. It's where you differentiate 1 over t. We said quotient rule, you first of all differentiate numerator. So t constant differentiate 1. Minus, now you hold one constant and differentiate the denominator. The denominator is t all over denominator squared. So when you differentiate one, you get zero. So it will be t times zero minus one. When you differentiate t, you get one all over t squared. So you get minus one over t squared, which is the same as this one. You may decide to use the quotient rule, or you may decide just to take that one as a, as a numerator only and avoid the fraction itself. So that's how we differentiate 1 over t. We get negative 1 over t squared times dt over dx, and you get that one. So that's our example 2. Maybe we can take example 3, where now, in this, in this case, 
we are using the, the, the exponential function. Let's take this one as our example 3 where you have been given your x is exponential to power 2t and my y is exponential to power 3t. Remember, we uploaded a video, which was our third video, on how we differentiate natural exponential. And we are able to say that if you are to differentiate natural exponential, maybe to remind you if you are given y is equal to exponential 3x, we said if you need to get change in y over change in x, the function remains the way it is, but now you differentiate the power. And the power is 3x. So you have to differentiate. The equation remains the way it is, but now you differentiate the power and you get 3, so you get 3 exponential, 3x. That's how we differentiate exponential. Uh, and you bear witness, uh, for more examples on the same on how we differentiate exponential, you can check on that video on how we differentiate derivative of natural exponential. So with this one now, we want to get the change in x over change in t. We differentiate this one with respect to t. We say the function will remain the way it is, but now you differentiate the power 2t. So you get 2 exponential 2t. Because here you get 2. So you get 2 exponential 2t. Now, change in y over change in t. The function will remain the way it is, exponential 3t, but now you differentiate the power. And in this case, my power is 3t. Here you get 3, so my answer will be 3 exponential 3t. That's how we differentiate exponential. So in that case, if I want now to get change in y over change in x, remember, we said it is change in y over change in t, times change in t over change in x. What is my change in y over change in t? Change in y over change in t, we have gotten it is 3 exponential 3t times change in t over change in x. Here we have change in x over change in t. So in that case, as you can see, change in x over change in t, we have change in x over change in t. It is 2 exponential 2t. So change in t over change in x is the reciprocal, 1 over 2 exponential 2t. So times 1 over 2 exponential 2t. So in this case, you find it is 3 over 2 exponential 3t all over exponential 2t. And based on the row of indices, if the base is the same, we subtract the power. So in that case, you get it is 3 over 2 exponential p. Because in this case, you realize that 3t minus 2t, will get 1t. So it will be exponential to power 1t. So that's how we get the first derivative. Maybe you can do the second derivative if you ask to, to take the second derivative. We said we differentiate with respect to y, our first derivative, and our first derivative we have gotten it is exponential, 3 over 2 exponential to power t, then times dx over dt over dx, dt over dx. So when you differentiate this one, you get what? How do you differentiate 3 over 2 exponential? Remember 3 over 2 is constant. So how do you differentiate? When you differentiate exponential to power t to remain the way it is, and when you differentiate the power, t, you get 1. So times change in t over change in x, which is 1 over 2 exponential 2t. So you get 3 over 4 exponential t all over exponential 2t. And based on the row of indices, the power, when the base is the same, you subtract the power if it is division. So you get 3 over 4 exponential to power negative t. And that's the answer. That's how we get the first derivative. So you differentiate x with respect to t, differentiate y with respect to t. You get those two values. Then you replace in our equation that change in y over change in x will be change in y over change in t times change in t over change in x. And to make it more clear on how we are writing this one, uh, just this just a hint so that you understand if you cancel change in t over change in t, you have dy over dx, which is the same as on this side. So there is no need of worry. And in the second derivative, you realize you have change in squared over y over change in x squared. If you are to have that argument of canceling change in t over change in t. So let's take the last example on the same, but this time on trigonometry. So we are looking at how we differentiate x is equal to sine squared of x. And 
most of the students, they might think this one is very hard, but if they know, they have little knowledge on trigonometry, they will realize this is just x sine x to power 2. y is equals to cos x to power 2. So uh, I have seen majority of students wondering how we differentiate this one. If you find it is sine squared of x, you realize in trigonometry we write sine x squared, we write it this way. So it's the same as sine x to power 2. So how do you differentiate that one? Remember this one, we wanted them to be function of t now, function of t. So you have function of t. So now, how do you differentiate to get change in x over change in t? So you find that this is a chain rule. So you bring 2 there. Then you have sine t. Now it will be to power 1. Then differentiate inside. You differentiate sine t. And when you differentiate sine t, so here you have 2 sine t. And when you differentiate sine t, you get cos t. You get cos t there. So again, if you have y, so change in y over change in t, you bring 2 there, so you have cos t to power 1, then you differentiate inside with respect to t, with respect to t even here, you have cos t, and when you differentiate here, you get a negative sine t. So it will be equal to negative 2 cos t sine t. So that's how we get the change in y over change in t. So if we want to get change in y over change in x, we say it to be change in y over change in t times change in t over change in x. What is change in y over change in t? It is this one, minus 2 cos t sine t times, what is change t over change in x? It is reciprocal of this one, so it will be 1 over 2 sine t cos t where you get minus 1. The answer will be minus 1. So in that case, you can be able to see that change in y over change in x will be minus 1. So I think with that one now, even though you are asked to calculate the change in t, uh, change in y over change in x squared, when you differentiate this one with respect to t, you find it 0. 0 times change in t over change in x, you get the, the second derivative will be 0 because already this one is a constant, so the second derivative will be zero. Now, having looked at the four examples on parametric differentiation, you can go and try to do this one, where you are required to calculate the second derivative. You have been given y and x on both two equations. So that's all we need to cover for today for parametric differentiation, uh, which I hope uh, it's a bit simple than we, most of you expected. And since we said here, we are here to simplify mathematics together, I hope with this one, you can be able to solve even more and more examples on parametric differentiation. Uh, what I would say is that com continue uh, watching my videos. And again, thanks a lot for making me reach more than 1,000 subscribers. It's been great pressure. It's because of your support. I, that one cannot go unnoticed and uh, I must appreciate that one. So continue watching for more videos on the same. Continue like sharing with the fellow students so that we can grow together and make mathematics simple together with your friends. Thank you.